Is he still just in the creek bed there? So I'm going to do a quick rundown of our week-long trip in Costa Rica. I was also planning to talk about some of the ways that we saved money on this trip in order to make it a little bit cheaper for ourselves. But this video is already really long, so if you are actually interested in that, let me know and I can make a separate video to talk about all the different ways that we saved money on this trip. But first, let's talk about the good stuff, the adventurous parts. After arriving in San Jose late on Saturday night, we then crashed at an Airbnb really close to the bus station because first thing on Sunday morning, we hopped on a bus and headed to Capos slash Manuel Antonio, where we then spent the rest of our trip. After grabbing a quick bite to eat overlooking the beach, we then hailed a taxi that took us the rest of the way to our new home for the week. As if you couldn't tell by the drive out here on Gravel Road, walking through the front door of the Airbnb, you're still completely surrounded by the jungle. The greenery and plants were literally everywhere. And you'd think that would mean little critters everywhere too, but surprisingly not. Only a little lizard roaming around. And a wild Morgan who we befriended and said, you know, while you're in the neighborhood, you know, just come on in, make yourself at home. Continuing the tour of the Airbnb, this is the living room and then the back patio with an outdoor shower for when we're all sandy from the beach. With plenty of outdoor seating, either exposed or with a roof to suit your mood. After settling into the Airbnb and running some errands at the local shop just up the road, we decided it was time to grab the bus and head towards the beach. And I'll just let you listen to our reactions as we first saw it when we got there. Oh my god, this is so pretty. Crazy! Little did we know what we were in store for later that evening when the sun started setting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The jungle came up all the way onto the beach, which was awesome because during the day it meant shade was never too far away. And once we got in the water, we realized the other amazing aspect is that the water was warm. Every other time I've been to the ocean, it's been either cold or very cold. I'm looking at you, Ireland. Forgot my GoPro slash lost my GoPro, so taking the phone into the ocean. We'll see how it goes. Oh God. Oh. oh. I promise these waves were much bigger in person and could easily knock you over if you weren't paying attention. But once you got out past where the waves were crashing, you could then just swim around without fear of being knocked over. Look how I can swim. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how is it? Uh, it's a little lopsided. You don't have a good bottom there. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah, now it is. <laughs> this is so fun. I love this. We stayed out in the water and on the beach through this incredible sunset. This is, I can't even, this is gorgeous. And once it got dark, we walked towards the light of the magic school bus, where we wrapped up our day eating some of Mrs. Frizzle's finest dining. Monday, zip lining. Monday's excursion was zip lining through the jungle. We got picked up by this giant freezer truck thing that was also somehow an ATV. And after picking up a couple more people, it then drove a few hours into the jungle where we then disembarked and got geared up. And at this point, if I had had my GoPro, I would have taken it with me, but I didn't have my GoPro, so I didn't take it with me. And we left literally everything else in the truck, which you'll see why in just a minute. But because of that, the only footage we had for the day were some photos and videos that the zip lining crew themselves shot for us. Most of the course was zip lining with a little bit of rappelling and then one giant rope swing near the end. Uh, but the highlight was definitely zip lining straight into a waterfall. Once you were good and soaked, the guides then pulled you out of the waterfall and then you got to pull a rip cord, which then dropped you into the pool of water below. And like I said, near the end of this excursion, there was a rope swing that if you timed it just right, you could actually hang upside down and with no hands, which was pretty cool. All in all, it was an absolutely unforgettable experience that I would highly recommend to anybody going to Costa Rica. Later that night, we then met up with Enoch, who was actually one of our tour guides from earlier that day, who we then shared dinner and drinks with overlooking the marina. Tuesday. 
coffee and chocolate. On Tuesday, we went on a chocolate and coffee tour where we learned a little bit about the history of coffee and the history of chocolate. And then at the end of the tour, we also got to try some of that chocolate and coffee that was grown right there on that very farm. This farm in particular is growing in a permaculture method, which means that rather than a large mass production farm where a bunch of fertilizers and pesticides and other chemicals are used, instead, they utilize other native plants to help them achieve the same end result without the need for all of those chemicals. After walking through some of the farming area, we got to see different parts of the processing for chocolate and coffee, which includes drying and then roasting the beans to achieve the flavors we're all used to and love. After showing us the different steps, they made some Mexican hot chocolate for us to taste, which was a mix of water, cocoa, honey, vanilla extract, and cayenne. And our last drink slash treat of the trip was called Agua de Sapo, which means frog water. Luckily, it did not taste like frog water, but I did have to work like an animal. I had to work like a mule in order to help squeeze the natural sugarcane juices out for us to drink. And after getting dropped off back at our Airbnb, we then had the rest of the afternoon free, which we took that opportunity to, of course, go to the beach. This time we went a little further south, closer to Manuel Antonio National Park, where there were a lot more tourists and a lot more rocks. So we ended up just walking north on the beach to get back to where we were the day before, where we stayed until it was dark out once again. Wednesday. On Wednesday, we actually had nothing planned. So we took that opportunity to go back down to the beach, of course, where I then rented a surfboard. And after a measly hour of trying, I drank enough seawater to last me until the next time that I tried to go surfing and do the exact same thing again. That afternoon, we headed back to the Airbnb to get out of the heat. And when we got there, we were greeted by a toucan, a snake, and a whole troop of squirrel monkeys. After relaxing for a while back at the Airbnb, we then set out to yet another beach. This one was recommended to us by our friend Enoch from the day before. And he said, because it's a little bit more off the beaten path, there tends to be less people there. It was also tucked into a little cove, so the waves didn't knock you over when you just wanted to go for a nice relaxing swim. So, you know, maybe if I tried surfing here instead, I might have better success. Who knows? We stayed on that beach through yet another beautiful sunset, and then it got dark and we were on a beach off the beaten path, which meant a nice long dark hike back up through the jungle to get to the main road, which ended up being uh, pretty good practice for what was gonna happen the next day. Thursday. Sloths. Thursday morning, we got picked up at our Airbnb once again, this time to head to Manuel Antonio National Park. Now, while we had seen a lot of unique wildlife already, the one animal that we had not seen that is present in Costa Rica that we all wanted to see was a sloth. Luckily, Manuel Antonio National Park is very well known for having a lot of sloths there. But as soon as we stepped foot outside our Airbnb, our guide actually said, let's go up the road 
20 feet and right there is a sloth hanging out on a tree. He said, this is the closest you're gonna get to a sloth today, so take your pictures and enjoy it. And he was right. Once we got to the park, we did manage to find some more sloths, including a couple of mama sloths with their baby. We, aka our guide, also managed to find some cool birds, bats, and other bugs along the trail that our very untrained eyes clearly just walked right on by. Once you're inside Manuel Antonio National Park, there are also a couple of beaches inside there that since you've already paid the entrance fee to the national park, you might as well enjoy. So, surprise, surprise, that's what we did that afternoon. We hung out at the beach yet again. After grabbing some food on the way back to the Airbnb, we took a little bit of time off and relaxed. Later that evening, we were walking back towards the main road to go get some dinner for the night, and we heard a transformer blow, which knocked out all of the power in our area of town. And we have to conserve our... Um, what happens when the power goes out in Costa Rica? We have no idea. They just can't see anything. We have no idea. Uh, can you see the sky? Maybe. Kinda. Yeah, there's a the sky. Luckily, we had trained for this the night before, climbing up from the beach. Thankfully, the power outage seemed to be very localized. None of the restaurants or anything on the main road was affected. And by the time we got back home a couple hours later, the power was back on. And that pretty much sums up the trip. Friday and Saturday were basically filled the entire days with travel back home, um, which I can talk about again in a different video. Like I said, if you're actually interested to know some of the ways that we saved money on this trip or made it a little bit cheaper for ourselves, I can make another video about that. Uh, and a large part of the way that we saved money is through the travel parts. So. I'll leave that for another video if you're actually interested in hearing about that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later.